Stewart. I'm uh, Nadine de Vascarel. I'm a psychologist, and I'm the head of well-being at Jumeirah Primary School. And um, I chose the topic of a safe internet environment because I think it's a real challenge for everyone today, for schools, for parents, for students. And so I really want to have a discussion to share um, what other schools are doing and how we can all improve on this uh, on this question. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Subodh Jani. I'm from uh, JSS Private School. Okay. And I look over, I'm the head of the Department of Physical Education, and I look for health and safety of the school. Okay, great. Thank you. And this is Shara. I'm the Vice Principal of Rajgiri International School. Okay. And I'm the head of the health and safety. Okay. I'm the head of the Department of Science and Senior Secondary Supervisor. And I'm also looking after the IT. IT. Okay. I'm from a very senior student. Okay. <coughs> I'm Clay Connor. I'm from JPH with you. Would you like to present yourself again to everyone? Yeah. Hi, this is Vishu. I'm an art teacher with the Rafi Center for Disability Children. And I agree. Art for all and art is everywhere. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bonnie Cocker and I'm a student from Aiden High School of Arts. I'm Rebecca. I'm an assistant and student. I'm Abraham. Coming from Indian High School. I'm a student. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Chris Huntley. I am. Uh, I work with Nadine and Claire at JPS, uh, and my role is uh, innovation leader and class teacher. Okay. So. Um, you know, the, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, of course, as you all know, digital life is everywhere uh, nowadays, and it's here to stay. Uh, screen starts off when our children are babies now. Um, very early on, they start to watch television. Maybe they watch Disney Channel, uh, some cartoons. Maybe when they're at the restaurant or at the doctor's, they play on their mom's or their dad's phone. Uh, in schools also, we're starting to, in schools also now, we're starting to uh, have uh, policies in certain schools where they bring their own device. There's a lot of online gaming. We work with Chris, we work in a primary school, and what we're seeing is some children who already have their own cell phones, uh, some children who are already using social media, so are on social networks, um, children who are multitasking, they're having a chat on Skype while watching the TV, or they're with their iPad, or they've got several screens going on at the same time in the same house. Um, and a lot of them are on online games with the risk of online chatting. Uh, so why is it so important to address for schools? Um, first of all, technology can be a wonderful tool uh, to promote learning and also to promote communication. So we have to see the wonderful opportunities that it gives. Um, but it is also very addictive. As we all know, you know, we're all addicted to our cell phones and to our computers, and it's the same with young children. So the risks are high, and there's a very, very strong uh, desire from the parents and from teachers to have clear guidance on what to do and where to go. Um, also, the, the, there's a, a very uh, big discrepancy between what the, children's, uh, the, what the children are able to do technologically and their emotional and cognitive development. So they're not, there's a big gap. They're not ready a lot of the times emotionally and cognitively to do things online that they could do uh, technologically. So that's why there's this big gap and we need to support them. The potential risks, um, of course, as you all know, access to inappropriate content. Some people say that in Dubai you're safe uh, from any inappropriate content, but of course that's not true. And the children are the first ones to know the tricks to, um, to, to avoid the blocks. Cyberbullying is a big, big problem in uh, a lot of schools. Um, there's also a risk for identity theft, viruses, uh, unfortunately online predators. Uh, in, in my practice at uh, JPS, what I see with a lot of children 
are uh, parents reporting tantrums, uh, addictive type of behavior, so parents cannot get the iPad back, and the child is really um, holding on to the device. Uh, I see a lot of children experiencing nightmares, uh, aggressive behavior in the classroom, or with their siblings, a lot of anxiety disorder. Uh, I brought a few examples, of course I changed the names, from children that I see on a weekly basis in, the, in well-being at my school. Uh, for example, Sam, a six-year-old boy, uh, whose teacher says that he struggles with attention and with focus. And when I meet with him, he tells me that he's playing a Call of Duty Modern Warfare every night, which is an 18 plus video game. Uh, Christina, she's showing anxiety in the classroom, and she actually watches horror movies at night. Uh, Karen, he's 11, he's watching inappropriate sexual videos online. And uh, Bisher, he's 11, and he's having suicidal thoughts, and he's playing Assassin's Creed, uh, which is 18 and above, also a video game. So this, I really see on a daily, on a daily uh, basis, the impact of inappropriate um, usage. So uh, our approach that we're using at JPS is triple to, uh, to respond to this need through education, strong procedures, and IT support. Chris will tell you more about the IT support. Um, in terms of education, of course we need to educate all the members of the, of the community, of the school, to have more impact. So the first, uh, first people to educate are the teachers. They need support in knowing how to handle situations, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what are the rules, uh, how to ha handle cyberbullying incidences. Uh, parents, of course, are in need and are, are requesting for uh, guidance. Uh, it can be through uh, conferences, letters sent out in the children's uh, back backpack, sending fact sheets. There's lots of different ways to invite parents in and to guide them in this process. Uh, students, we have run a whole uh, digital citizenship week last year. That could be one way to do it. It can be through your assemblies, through classrooms, doing the IT classes. There's also lots of ways to educate the students. Uh, the topics to address to all of them are are all of these, um, of course, depending on the needs of your school, but, but these are all uh, important to have in your mind. Um, internet safety is, of course, the basic, you know, how to stay safe on the internet. We teach our children to swim. We teach our children to cross a road. It's the same, we have to teach our children what can they do to stay safe when they're navigating online. Privacy and uh, security teaching them how to have strong passwords, recognizing scams, digital footprints and reputation, um, teaching our children that whatever they post online will be there forever, it never disappears. The, the bad things, but also the positives. We tend to say that universities now, or job recruiters, they do a check online on, on what's, what's up there uh, about your past. Uh, we tended to think that they were only looking for negative things. Actually, now they're also looking for positives. How do you exist online? What, how do you contribute to the online world? Um, Self-image and identity. Um, and th this <coughs> is ch educating the children between um, the difference between your real self and sometimes how we pretend to be someone different online especially, for example, with Instagram or all of these kind of social media where maybe, and adults the same, we pretend to show a much nicer picture than you know, how we really are. So this gap in their, their image and identity. Relationships and communication, how to be respectful online, uh, how to communicate. You ju don't just send an email saying yes or no. You actually, there are uh, etiquette rules to follow. Cyberbullying, of course. And the two last ones, information literacy and creative credit and copyright, 
it's it's very important to address in a in a copy and paste uh, kind of world. It's so easy now to just go to Wikipedia, copy and paste, and you're done with your work. Um, so trying to help children learn to take responsibility for for what they create, but also for what other people have have created. Um, if there's one slide that I would like you to remember, it's this one. I think that this is the best tool online available for educators. It's called Common Sense Media. It's a nonprofit organization, and they have uh, created a wonderful website with a lot of resources for parents and for teachers. They have a free cur curriculum, which goes through all the different topics that we just saw that was really created you know, with the Harvard Graduate School of Education to work on youth and digital ethics. Um, they review all the new films, all the new apps, all the new video games. Uh, they have a full review. So now, as soon as I have a child coming saying, oh, last night I was playing on Assassin's Creed, I say, well, let's check onto Common Sense Media. Let's, say what, let's see what they say to help the children also take responsibility in learning what, what they're doing, what they're watching. This is an example. Uh, I just typed in Instagram on Common Sense Media. And so this is the, the typical format for any app or any review. They're gonna give an age, age appropriateness. Age appropriateness for Instagram is 13. But a lot of primary children using Instagram. Um, and then it gives a grade for, so depends on the app, but for videos it has positive model, positive message, violence, inappropriate content, uh, and um, it really is a very, very useful guide both for teachers and parents and the children themselves. Um, so Education was one of the approaches. The second approach is having clear procedures uh, in your school with clear policies. Um, I think that best practice would be to have a digital policy, an internet safe internet policy. Now, there are lots of things online, um, but you need to see what do you want for your school? How can you adapt it to the needs of your children? Um, I would recommend creating a committee with several parents, several teachers, maybe even several uh, students to get them involved so that they all participate in what they want in that uh, digital policy. You have to have very clear rules and consequences for uh, any possible scenario, and there's a lot. Uh, try and think of all the possible scenarios, even though you know it's going to be hard. Uh, and then that policy has to be out there. It has to be communicated widely. The teachers need to know exactly what the policy is. Parents need to know that. Uh, and of course, the students need to know. Uh, most schools have a school digital contract. So if a child is going to be using the internet in school, they have to sign a contract uh, with rights and, and rules and consequences. And lastly, stay informed. Uh, I'm talking a lot about the negatives, but of course internet is a great, great resource. So stay in the game, know what's out there, try and you know, spend time with the, the students and, and be interested in what they're doing online. Um, also, just a few things to think about when you're creating your policy. The, the first one, of course, is the digital access. Are children allowed internet in your school? Are they allowed to go to YouTube? What about if they have video games on their own device? These are reflections that we've had with Chris in our school, and we don't have all the answers, um, but it's good to try and think of all the possibilities. Uh, think about the law. Uh, remind the students what the UAE law is on cyberbullying and, um, and these issues. Rights and responsibilities in terms of um, just uh, for the children, education plan that has to be included, and then a cyberbullying plan. I think cyberbullying is going to be, unfortunately, more and more frequent, uh, and we need to have a clear plan of how we're going to prevent it and deal with it.
Okay, Chris. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to give you is a little bit of context around. Do you mind if I stand for something? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, a little bit of context for our school because. Uh, I think I came from the UK where the schools weren't anywhere near as big as what they are in Dubai, it seems. We're a seven form entry school, so we've got approximately 1,500, 14 to 1,500 children that um, we're hoping to sort of educate and show them the, the best way forward. Um, for me, coming from home, I came from a reasonably big school, I thought, which was three form entry, 600 children, less than half the staff that we had. So, actually, one of our jobs as the IT department. Uh, our, our team is to not only think about what we can do to help the children learn using this fantastic um, educational resource which is technology and internet, but also how we're going to get that message out. One of the first things that we normally start with, or what we're, we should be starting with, is why are we using it? If it's something that um, we can use to enhance the children's learning, then it's so important, isn't it? And we know through research and we know through anecdotal evidence and uh, through conversations with children, they get excited and they want to learn using technology. So this is something that we go into every day at school knowing that that's the drive. We know that's the drive. So when we approach our resourcing and our plan, this is the thing, the central key thing. And it's my job within our school to look at that and think about how we can continue to develop. One of the things that we have at school is we have a central resource um, website which uh, we, we have the main structure of our um, technology at its home, we call it Art the Weebly, um, and it basically has all the things on that we're going to talk about today, but we're going to, I'm hopefully going to just explain a, bit, a little bit more uh, uh, clearly as to what, how we use them. Now one of the things that we encourage all the children to use, and adults actually, is safe search engines. Now Google's great, but we know Google. Uh, an accidental press on one button extra gives you a very different search to what you might like. With, with search engines such as Kids Re Kid Rex uh, and Yahoo for Kids, there's some fantastic search engines out there that make the, the searching and surfing and extracting and gathering information, which is so important in learning, it makes it safe and accessible. And this is one of the things that we are forever uh, promoting with the children, the teachers, and getting more effective with uh, approaching with the parents. Uh, one of the things that we're talking more and more about with parents is creating a, a sort of central list of resources that we'd like them to use at home to help the children support the learning at school, help support the children when they're learning at school. Uh, and Google actually, and Google Apps for Education, is one that we're pro uh, using more and more and more. And I don't know how that sits with your schools, but it's something that we can really um, keep an eye on and encourage them to explore as well. So it's quite a nice one, it gives us that good balance, it gives us the control, but it also gives the children the flexibility to explore. Now at our school we have, um, not only do we have the, the Wi-Fi filtering and firewalling around just the device Wi-Fi infrastructure, but our school also has a licensing um, uh, license through Aruba. We have a thousand licenses, uh, so the children can access it through their own uh, devices, particularly in Key Stage 2, and what they can do is they can explore away during, that, during the school day, but it gives us the control of what they're searching for. So that's one of the things that, if you're, I don't know how your provision is at school, uh, uh, secondary as well as primary, but coming from a primary uh, side of things, it makes school much, much easier knowing that we have a very secure, very well filtered, uh, internet and Wi-Fi infrastructure, which means that we have control. Okay. Um, now, secure learning platform. This is the thing here that we are working on at the moment. So, my learning. So, we're from a Gem school, and Gems are bought in as a company to a uh, my learning platform. You're a, are you a, are you a Gem school. <laughs> so, I'm here at Gem school. So, yes, yeah, so you've heard about my learning. So, my learning is going to be really, really effective. <laughs> You're a gems from gems as well, so have you heard about my learning yeah, too? Yeah. It's really good, but it's not the only, it's not the only learning platform or style of learning platform that's out there. Google Classroom is another one. I'll keep banging on about Google. Should get some commission from them. Um, <laughs> uh, it's on camera now. <coughs> that's good. Um, it's, these these learning platforms are fantastic because again, it comes down to that control. It gives us control as teachers and educators and parents and adults, 
Um, we're supposed to be responsible. And uh, it allows us to keep the children exploring, 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 being curious, which we want them to ultimately be, but it keeps it safe. It keeps it um, permissions-based too, which is another thing that's very important. We can control that, uh, the experience that they have. Now, one of the things we encourage very, very early on uh, with the children, right from FX1 and FS2, is passwords and usernames. Now, my school back in the UK had the usernames that were devised by someone like me that wasn't a teacher uh, and gave them the most ridiculous passwords and usernames. So actually, it defeated the object. There was no access. The mm -hmm. children couldn't remember the wrote how to write their name, which order letters was going to name. So they were never going to remember a password with mixed characters, underscores, and all sorts of things. But it's a very important lesson for the children to learn early on. We found through our work at JPS that the earlier you start, it might seem like it's a bit of a pain at the beginning, but a year down the line when they've got it and they've become used to this sort of permissions-based access, they find it uh, very, very easy. And again, it gives us control. It gives us the opportunity to keep it safe and the children still have room to explore. Now, suggested list of safe resources for teachers. That is one thing that is really tricky. And this is where I would sort of go back to what Nadine said about staying in the game. Mm -hmm. Try and stay ahead of game if you can, but the children are so resourceful and curious, aren't they, that they find things often before we do, which is both great and, again, a pain for us. Now, this is one thing that will ever forever be evolving. You've also got the situation where you have a great um, resource like in Instagram, which could be, when it's, it's positively used, it's fantastic. Every night I'm on Instagram looking at the best places to eat in Dubai and the UAE. But negatively, the negative side of it um, is what we spoke about before, inappropriate content. So one of the things that we can do again, though, is we can manage and control it more and more. And these companies, with our voice, can help change this to help us have some control. Instagram and Twitter and uh, some other social media sites have protected uh, Membership, which means that you can accept people to follow you and you can follow only certain people. So, so there is that potential too. But again, that will grow and grow and grow. This is one of the things that we speak to the teachers about and hope, hopefully have open dialogues. Dialogue. If you see something that's really good, let us know. We can explore, we can play, and then we can send it out to the rest of the team and hopefully uh, carry on making the learning as exciting as possible. Now, uh, the staff usage one is one that we have to have in place yet we've never had to really worry about it. And to be honest with you, 99.9% .9 of the teachers around the world, it's not an issue. But again, what it does is it just gives us some control. It allows us to help guide teachers and guide usage within schools. We use Impero, which is, again, a bit like Aruba, actually. It's a license-based system where you can buy it, and what you can do is you can just monitor it. And it's really good, actually, for analytics. It's not even about a monitoring teachers thing, it's, a, it's an analytics thing. So we can see what are the most popular hits with the children at school, what are the most popular hits with the adults at school, where are they going with their searches, what are they doing, what are they finding out about, what natural uh, social media packages do they follow, because again, we know with teachers and educators, there's a whole host of resources on there that we can use really, really effectively. And again, this last one is one thing that at the moment we are doing a lot of work on. And actually, I think this is probably the key, the key uh, point actually in the whole in the whole presentation. I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Is that open dialogue with parents and teachers and senior leadership and children, creating that uh, environment for discussion and sharing makes life a lot easier for implementing technology successfully, safely, and effectively. Now, one of the things we're doing at the moment with the parents from year, actually, in fact, one and, year, one and two are going to get this this week, <laughs> is we're trying to find out from them what social media they use, so we can use that as well. Um, what, um, what if they have Google Drive accounts to help us help support the learning? The reason why, um, and also, and we're looking at to implement BYOD, bring your own device, from year three to year six. We want to know what they think about it. We want to know if it's something that they'd be willing to support how many resources, how many devices we're going to have to supply. So for us, it's fantastic. It helps us really keep ahead of the game and inform them as to what, what's going to be happening and changing in education at JPS, but also wider than that too. 
The response to that so far has been fantastic. The parents feel so well informed, and we've got a situation where they are buying into what we are doing, which we know as teachers and educators that that's one of the biggest challenges, isn't it? We have a vision, but we need to impart it and, uh, and move on from there. Um, one of the things I will say as well uh, with uh, the parent and adult element of technology and, uh, and learning is there are lots of people that I've worked with in education and teaching and uh, my, my management and leadership in the past that don't understand it as well as what children do. They've always done it this way, we'll stick to this way. The children are growing, they're often, they're evolving, they're learning far quicker than we are. They will outgrow us in the years to come if we don't keep the dialogue open, if we're not trying to stay in the game. And we do not, that means then we will lose control. And that's the thing for me, is it's about control. Sounds like a control freak, but I'm not. It's about, <laughs> it's about us trying to provide something that's far more exciting and far more safe than we ever had when we were younger. Any questions on any of these things before I go on? Is there anything? I think this is the last slide. Okay, yeah. I just want to share because yeah. the kids are more smart. You know, the Facebook, they have the age limit. Yeah. They are so smart, they are putting their age 27, yeah. they are 30, or like that, to get the access of FB. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to control the age. Yeah, one of the things around Facebook as well, we found with the parents too, was parents would love to set up a Facebook group. They love to feel like they know what's going on. So one of the things we've got ready to go is our own Facebook page for the school, which we can moderate, we can restrict, so we only accept uh, content that we put out our end, but it means that they can share with grannies and grandparents and aunts and uncles abroad internationally. Um, and we're also aware that um, these issues come up. And one of the things that I think we can do with that as well, one of the things that I know um, some, of the, some schools are doing really well in Dubai, is they're saying that, look, we know you've got a Facebook account. Schools, we can't do anything about that. There's no way we can help or support that. But what we can do uh, is we can say to them, if you do that, what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to this, this, and this. And I think that educate, that, that sort of open dialogue with parents and with children and with fellow teachers means that that should become less and less of an issue. And I think what people do is that they'll naturally go, oh, I don't like it, we're not doing it. And actually, what that does is it creates that big sort of chasm in between where the uh, inappropriate behavior and content appears. And actually, what we need to do is we all need to be in there working together to find a way, I think. But um, I think you're right. I think it happens all the time. There's a good side also. Yeah. I noticed that people, like my students, deaf and dumb, they're on Facebook yeah. and they are using the writing, the message. They, they want yeah. to convey their uh, feeling of heart so very easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They cannot speak, but they cannot just type. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy yeah. to connect with the world for them. It's yeah. really nice. And it's great, isn't it? Yes. Most ninety-nine point nine percent of the time, it's fantastic, isn't it? We love it. I love Even it. Even I can share my one of the students. She's with WhatsApp on me, and only I can understand what is she is writing. Yeah. She will never understand the what sentence she is writing. <laughs> but being a teacher, I understand because she don't have the language so much. She don't know the language at all because she cannot speak. But she's choosing the alphabet in such way to convey her message, and it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the beauty of the internet and the oh, technology. Yeah. I have one question. Uh, yeah? With the BYD policy, is it possible to monitor what each student is doing uh, from the uh, classroom? Yes, it is. So one of the things you can do is you can, uh, there's different packages that you can buy. But Maybe based on Windows or iOS or Android, and uh, yeah. So you can you can um, you can monitor usage for different packages. So you can mirror as well. So for example, depending on the what the way you've got your infrastructure set up at school, you, there's packages where you can control and direct what's being used. You can lock in screens, so only certain screens can be used during certain lessons and that sort of thing. You can. Um, one of, the, one of the best things I find is uh, there's, there's, there's software where, which we don't have yet, but I'm budgeting hopefully for, for the next year, where I can be working at the front, the children are on devices. Are you on a device there? So for example, what I could do is I could say, okay, your number, you're uh, using uh, unit one, unit one, let's see what you've got on the screen. So what do you mean I could 
Oh, cool. So you've got some great ideas about this, this, and this. Uh, and then it's a very easy way to get that <laughs> trust and control. So all it takes is one to go, oh, well, oh, I'm using that one. Right, next person, what, what, what? And then there's that, there's uh, that approach the, to it. But we are having that person, and it's possible to see all the um, one case on my laptop. Yeah. But it would work only on one base, like iOS or uh, Android or Windows. Okay, yeah, so, so you can't, can't do bits. Uh, yeah. There's, there is stuff that's coming out at the moment. I know, I went to a conference last week, there's a guy that I met uh, who's going to be working very closely with Gems from now on, who's got a system where it doesn't matter whether what device it is, it will uh, manage it. Because like you say, yeah, some of them are specifically linked to iOS or... No, we need to log it through our um, school website, yep. and then we get access only to those sites which we want them to get access yeah. to. That's what happens in our school. So we give them a user ID, an ID and password, they log in through the school ID, and they have access only to those sites which we want them to oh, Including the search engine? Yes. You can decide oh. Yes, yes. Certain sites are blocked. But we have cases in our school where, with, because of the server, we blocked some of the sites, like Facebook is yeah. logged in my school. Yeah. But some of the kids, you can say smart kids, they have a procedure to open that office. Yeah. And you know, we, we come to know, then we find out another way, and they find they find it before us, to again open it. Yeah. And this is the thing, this is where schools have got to be very clever in terms of the, uh, a lot of teachers are not experts in technology. Yeah. Most you teachers have are not. Ethical yes, that's right. Check which but this, but this is the thing. This is one of the things that we're encouraging of this culture of trust. So as that appears, it, that will be less and less and less, and it will stand out more. And this is the thing that we find at, at JPS. The reason why these things come out is because they're so, they've become so much less in number that when they do stand out, it's very easy to direct them towards Nadine and well-being. Really. So it's one of those things that we found uh, it comes up quite quickly, doesn't it? And it's then acted on quite quickly too, isn't it? Um, we try to really create a culture of openness and to really, um, to, to, so if anyone sees something, that they come and tell an adult that they can trust and that they will not be reprimanded, there will not be consequences. Uh, I really teach the children that even if they yeah. see something inappropriate, to go and tell an adult, either a family member or someone at school, uh, because I see so many children where they have these images, violent or pornographic images in their head, and if they're not sharing that with someone, if they can't discuss it with someone who says, you know, this is not right, uh, and, and together we're going to, to, to find a way to, so, so that you feel better, then they just keep that to themselves and with a feeling of guilt uh, and fear. So the idea is really to tell our students, you know, if you see anything that seems wrong, that seems inappropriate, where you get, you know, just a bad feeling, you know, you have to tell an adult and you will not get in trouble for that. Uh, and the not getting in trouble is really important to build that trust. Otherwise they won't come. I think it's also um, important to schools when they formulate their digital policy to include the students. Yes. I think that's, that's one way that, and I don't think we can ever stay ahead of them, yeah. but at least we can be with them. Yes. Yes. Exactly. They will be with us. Yeah. They're good at self policing children as well, aren't they? So they'll, they'll always dob on each other if uh, <laughs> the, somebody's done something wrong. So it's quite, it's quite such a bribery anyway. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I was going to say, about, uh, I don't know how your schools are set up, but we're very, very lucky uh, to have a system where we have a department where we have uh, two technicians, uh, a network manager and a junior network manager, and a data manager, as well as myself to support the, the, the use of ICT. I think as we're moving forward, that should grow. There should be more people having more time to focus on this, because to, to, to support teachers and support learning and support the children and adults and parents around schools, that is fundamental if it's growing in the same way that the roles in the past have developed. Phonics, guided reading, all these things that are pushed forward, this should be pushed forward more and more. This should have much more of a place. I've met some schools recently that they have um, a structure where they've got this sort of system, but they've got double the numbers that we have in Shop involved in it to make the teaching and learning much more effective and safer. And there's that control as well. 
you think it's going to be time? It's been 20 minutes. Okay, so is there any last question or comment that you want to share? Okay, well, thank you so much for coming. And I think we've got a great new speaker, speaker afterwards, right? Just speaking afterwards. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>